Hello everyone, so this time I would like to share a video with some tips for panned crotch simulations. I picked three cases that I often see where I feel like a few simple steps could really improve the look. The first case is women's wear leggings and this one I really see very very often somehow. As you can see, I don't know it's, if it's very obvious to other people but for me it's very obvious that these leggings are kind of hanging low and if I hide this pattern piece I can see that there's a lot of distance between the crotch of the leggings and the crotch of the avatar and unless it's really intentional and it's really like a design or fit detail I don't know um, this is not really how women wear leggings I think I do have leggings that the fit is not very good so they tend to kind of crawl down and it creates this kind of look that the crotch is very low and I have to say it's not very comfortable to wear them like that and I and you know that's not a very common I think fit for leggings so if you're visualizing just regular leggings and you end up having this kind of sim simulation I really suggest you to just select all the patterns of the leggings and just bring it up it's very quick and easy way to fix it and I think it's totally worth it because now the fit looks much better much more accurate as well as the length of the legs are showing accurately because if your crotch is lower than the avatar's actual crotch then of course the legs also look shorter so that's not really accurate representation neither of the leggings nor the person so yeah this was one very simple case that I think can be easily fixed then the second case that I often see is that for menswear, especially that the waistband, waistband position is quite high, which makes the crotch kind of stretched on to the avatar's crotch. And also the inseam is kind of um, becoming wavy like this. And as you can see, it's very kind of stretched on the avatar. Again, it could be intentional but generally this I think is not how men wear shorts or you know pants in general of course there are tight fit pants um, but if you're visualizing kind of looser fit pants um, I don't think the crotch is that high up so here the same approach first you can bring the pants down just by selecting all the pattern pieces and bringing them down by um, with the gizmo tool and another thing that I wanted to mention here is this kind of gap here. So when you create sewing, um, by default, the fold angle is 180. So the software tries to keep this sewing in a straight angle. So 180 angle. Of course, it's not 180 angle here, but it really tries to keep it that way. That's why this kind of gap is created. And I'm not saying it's always wrong to have it or it's like a bad look of course if you simulate the pants like this it's completely fine um, I don't think it's a big mistake or something but what I like to do is to adjust the fold angle to 360 and when I do that you can see it kind of releases um, I don't even know how to explain it it releases the seam so it kind of falls down naturally how I think it would fall down in a real garment. And I think it looks kind of more natural, I believe. So I use this approach very often for shorts, pants, all kind of um, relaxed silhouettes because I like that there's no kind of forced gap um, in the crotch area. And again, when you click on the sewing line you will see the fold angle by default it's 180 but when you change it to 360 it kind of releases and falls down like this and looks um, quite natural I think and the third case is a little bit trickier so when you have cargo pants or workwear pants or denim pants that have this kind of double needle stitch um, very often if you don't add any extra pattern piece to replicate um, the seam allowance then it doesn't look very realistic it doesn't look like there's actually a seam allowance that 
when the seam allowance is stitched down it kind of gathers this area and if you have a look at pictures of real garments you will see that this is not really how the crotch usually looks like when you have this kind of double stitch here so I will show you how to um, create a more realistic look so I have already prepared internal lines for um, those stitches so that's one thing that you need and the second you need additional pattern piece so first I will measure uh, where this pattern piece will go so, so starting from here where the stitch starts until the very end at the back so this is the length of the pattern piece that I will create and the width of the pattern piece depends on what kind of stitch you create so I have two millimeter plus one centimeter stitch so in total it's 1.2 centimeter and the length will be this that I just measured and I will stitch all three of these lines so I need to add additional internal line two millimeter distance so that's the distance from edge to the first stitch and now I will stitch it down so first I will stitch together the outlines and here it's important to change sewing line type to turned now I will stitch the first line and the last one okay so here what I will already do is reduce particle distance but because this is a small detail and I also will reduce additional thickness collision to 1.5 and superimpose under and now this extra piece oh that's not looking good so if it's not positioned well you can do superimposed side and under again but sometimes you just have to stick with the side and you use the set sub layer function to tell the software that these pattern pieces will have to go on top of this um, tiny pattern piece okay so I'm doing the sewing for now it doesn't really look that good but I will explain how to improve so first step what to do to improve it is to add um, some additional refinements so here you don't need anything but if you look at front there is this kind of um, I don't know how to explain it but I will show it I think that's better so here I have just straight angle right so he but here it kind of goes up so it's not straight angle so I need to lift um, this point a little bit I will just do it um, approximately something like this and that's a first point that improves the simulation and then I also need to adjust the sewing a little bit because I will rotate it back when you check the sewing lines you can see that here it's kind of they're not ending at the same level but the levels are different so that's why you can see it's kind of pulling like this so it's not straight and that's not the look that I want so I level it usually it's not super precise but it can be there can be some differences a little bit but the most important thing that it's not this kind of sharp this difference I, I hope it's I hope I can explain it better okay something like this and once I simulate you can see that the simulation really changes so it becomes more straight so before that this part was kind of pulling up and once I changed the simulation uh, the sewing and I kind of leveled where the sewings are um, then 
yeah it definitely improved the look and um, another thing because there are some sewing line um, differences the lengths are different I also add elastic so that this top pattern pieces don't um, stretch out in this piece so I will do 100 already the difference is noticeable and to also make it more firm because once this type of stitch is done that means that two layers of seam allowances are stitched to one side so that means this piece in real life would be really firm so in this case you can add seam taping I just need to add it to one line I'll do this one uh, seam taping work okay 12 and I will choose this one the strong one and then it will become more firm also the level of detail that you can see really depends on the particle distance so now the particle distance is 10 so you can't really see much wrinkle but you can already see that the crotch seam looks more realistic but once I reduce the particle distance 5, in addition to the actual shape, you will be able to see some wrinkle as well. This is how it looks without the extra pattern piece, and this is how it looks when you add this extra piece. Of course you can live without it, it's not that big of a deal, I think. These are the tiny details that can make a big difference. If you really want to achieve like that true-to-life hyper-realistic look. Yeah. Okay, so basically that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Bye!